Welcome to Practical Business Technology, where we keep you in the know about technology's impact on business. Today's show is sponsored by the Maricopa County Bar Association, and our host is Dave Kinsey, author and owner of Total Networks. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to talk about how to plan your annual technology assessment. I guess the first word in that is plan. Yeah, and I think that, well, the first step is realizing that you should do that at least once a year. If you're a larger business, you should be assessing your technology on a more regular basis, maybe, maybe quarterly. If you're not quite as large, maybe twice a year, three times a year, but any business should at least step back um, and look at their technology once a year. And that's just because, I mean, when you're running your business, you're focused on your business, which you should be. You don't need to be focused on your technology all the time. But the problem is you don't want to be going along, doing your business, doing your business, doing your business. Oh, I got hit with ransomware and I'm down. And now this really does affect my business. And, you know, I just haven't really took a you know, chance from an executive level, from a business owner level to look at my technology And so it's just, it's having that rhythm and that checklist to at least look at it once a year. Right. So if you don't have a checklist, that's maybe one of the things to start with is trying to decide what are the controls that you want to follow for your business. Some companies might have to follow CMMC, others might need to follow HIPAA or NIST. But even if you don't have any specific regulations, having some kind of framework so that if you did get audited, or had to respond to a security questionnaire from a vendor that you've thought through what are the basic buckets of things that you need to think about. You know, maybe it's backups, maybe it's um, what hardware you have, an inventory of your software, uh, et cetera. Yeah, well, in terms of, you know, we all, everyone fits within laws, and so there are at least state privacy laws and, and whatnot. So everybody at least has some laws. But regardless of laws, really what you're trying to do is you, you say, say, you know, if, if you're one of those highly regulated industries where you have really detailed things you need to comply with, well, you're, you're going to know probably know more about that. Um, but I, let's, this talking, I think this is talking more towards this, the general business population. Um, you, everybody has systems and everybody has risks and opportunities and, and they want to basically figure out how to manage those risks and opportunities to take advantage. You know, it's not just looking at risk, it's also looking at opportunities where you may have opportunities to take uh, advantage of new technology to be more efficient or... uh, Right, so you might just make an inventory of what all you do have, and then from there, look at everything you do have and evaluate what's the risk associated with each of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, what what could happen? And then... um, Maybe you have some goals that come out of that thought process. You know, what are your goals to move yourself to another level? Yeah, everybody needs to have, everybody should have a plan. And the idea is, well, if you don't have a plan, you start to develop it and kind of figure out, well, what are your short-term objectives? You know, what are you looking to accomplish in the next few months, next year, next two years, three years, and, and kind of map that out. Right, so... Um, so, but to start with it, you have to really, like you said, take an inventory and, and not just an inventory of, you know, physical things, but, you know, maybe software, maybe just an inventory of how your business processes work. Who to, are the vendors that you work with? Who are the vendors with? you work with? You know, basically, you want to create a list of, of everything that basically is your technology and uh, and assess it and, you know, give it a health score, right? Is it is it is it green, good, check mark kind of good thing? Or is this like, you know, question mark, you don't really know, or you do know, and you know this is like danger, danger problem that you need to address. Yeah. Yeah. For, for you example. Can't, you can't manage what you don't know. For example, you might just think of one item, and as an example, maybe it's your security, physical security. What are the risks there? Do you have a security alarm? Do you have a guard? Do you have a locked door? Mm -hmm. Do you have equipment that is easily accessible? Do you have, you know, if you don't have some of those things, what are the risks 
and what are the costs associated with putting those things in place and you need to decide okay well i think that the risk is okay i'm, I'm willing to live with that risk so i'm okay with that for this year or maybe gosh it really wouldn't be that hard to add a lock to that door mm -hmm. let's go ahead and do that and then that gets added to your action plan sure those are easy to visualize and, and also in this world where we've always been working remotely and even more and more looking at that and, and having policies regarding you know what people's home environment would be like and any kind of you know if there's any kind of documents or anything laying around there and and, and, and what have you making sure that they're working in a secure environment as well so right yeah maybe we're thinking about each in work environment both physically as well as digitally yeah so i'm like actually when i think about that when i think about people at home you know one of the things that's always important are just basic things like screen making sure you have your uh, screen lock set that's something that's trivial should be in place for everybody but it's it's one of those things on the list and now say you're at, at home do you do you have a different you know uh different policy on systems at home where they can be logged into systems at work and not have a screen lock well that's you know what that would be very dangerous because now you're you know i mean hopefully their home is reasonably secure but you you don't want to open yourself up to, to to risks with with that but um, that, that's not a, that's just an example of something kind of continuing that line of thought. It's, it's, that's not something that generally I see as a, as a huge area where people miss because people generally have things like that under control. So, I mean, it, just along the lines of thinking about what are the checklist items for your annual or quarterly, whatever it is, assessment, mm -hmm. um, having an inventory of all your things and people and technologies, mm -hmm. reviewing the risk associated with the what ifs of those things. Mm -hmm. But a huge, huge part is just documentation, policies, procedures around all of that, that you would need to read through, see what maybe has changed since the last time you worked on it. Sure, well, yeah, so when, um, we're kind of, yeah, when, when you're looking at the policies and procedures, that a lot of that is our business controls that really help you, you manage risk and manage your, you know, help drive how you manage your security. But then there's also things where you'd have on your checklist, say you're a manufacturing business, you know, maybe your system to manage inventory is not where it needs to be. Say you're a law firm and your document management is a mess. <laughs> you know, you don't really, you know, you, you have documents, you know that you have documents, you know people are where you're storing it, but you don't have it organized in a logical client matter, or, you know, document type organization, um, you know, and maybe you've got some opportunities to manage that. So there's just, you know, ex examples of, of things to be looking at. Well, and as you come up with items that are maybe at a risk, or they're not what you want them to be, or you realize, gosh, I don't have a document retention policy that just as going through this planning process, then that starts to build an action item list. Mm -hmm. And so then you can work from your action list and hopefully the next time you go through your planning, you've made some progress on those things. Yeah, so I think, yeah, basically you'll look and you'll perform an assessment of where all the different technology is, uh, all those different checklist items, um, look at the, the, the impact of those you know, in terms of, say, from a risk standpoint or an opportunity standpoint, where there could be the, the biggest bang for the buck, and do a, a, uh, a list of where you have opportunities to, to address those issues, and then you're going to create basically a list of next steps to, uh, to address those. And then you, you work those lists, and then it's you know, kind of a, a, a process where it repeats. It is a rinse and repeat. It is a definitely rinse so, and repeat. So, you know, you have a plan and you have a process around how you're going to do your planning. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you assess what what is at risk, what is working, what's not working, ideas on how to get it better, document all those things, have, you know, have your report, and then start acting on all of the shortcomings and um you know it that can maybe seem overwhelming i've i've thought about where you might not want to even get started on your plan because you already know that there's a lot of things you need to do but 
that might be one of the fir- most helpful things is to actually make a list and then mm-hmm. you can prioritize, okay, we have these 10 items that we need to work on. What's the most important? And then you can start on that most important thing. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, um, the most important thing is to start, is to get that, is to get that meeting where you figure this out on the calendar and at the end of that meeting, you know, take your notes of what you're doing in the action items and when's the next meeting you're going to have, which should be no more than a year out. Um, if it's if you realize, wow, I've got some some really huge risks or you know a huge opportunity or whatever, maybe you don't wait a year. Maybe you say, okay, we're going to follow up with this in you know in a month or three months or six months or, or whatever, and then just commit to have that regular meeting. The, the more often you get in that rhythm and you're having the meeting, you'll see the value of it if you do it right. Um, and you just you'll want to schedule that follow up because you know you're going to be help move your business forward um, on addressing those opportunities. So is this ever done? What do you mean? Are you ever done with your? Oh, is it, is it ever? Are you ever completed? So um, yeah, it's no, it's not. This is a process, right? So um, because technology is always changing. Yeah, the one thing that's the one thing that never changes about technology is that it's always changing. So that's. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game. And so if you if you are not proactively planning all this out and whatnot, you're just gonna kinda go with the flow and you'll find yourselves behind the eight ball. You'll either have yourself by default in a high risk situation that you could have avoided if you if you had taken just a little bit of time to, to manage it, you know, or at least you you would be in a lower risk stance standpoint. Um, you know, just spending at least a little bit of time on it. Or you may find that you're just, you know, say using old technology, just it's not as efficient. And you have opportunities you should be taking advantage of. So that's why figuring out how to meet, and, and it tends to be based on kind of size and complexity of the business, sort of dictates how frequently you should meet and, and, and talk about this. A very small business once a year really should be sufficient. But larger businesses, more complex businesses, definitely quarterly. So, and there's just, there's a continuum. Yeah, I mean, I do see a lot of benefits to having this discipline. You're going to stay more on top of the latest technology trends so that you'll be competitive in the workplace. Um, But you'll also be avoiding, hopefully, uh, real security shortcomings. I mean, cybersecurity is a ever evolving, always increasing, always need more. Yep. And so, yeah, from a security perspective, if if you are not meeting once a year to raise your game, you're losing ground. Because the I can tell you the, the bad guys are definitely raising their game continuously. So if you are just leaving it to where you're at today, that doesn't cut it. You're going to end up in a, in, a, in, a, in a very bad situation. It's and true. I mean, what worked five years ago to stop malware just doesn't work today. Yeah, it's not enough. But if you keep up on it, you can definitely manage the risk. You know, there are, you know, there's some people that would be like, well, you know, if I'm just going to get hacked, well, I'm going to get hacked, and that's just that's that's silliness. So um, there's definitely things that you, you can definitely manage your risk, um, and you and you need to. So I mean, the good news is technology continues to evolve, and that's a good thing because. You don't want to be using the technology that you were using ten years ago, or you know, even five. No, years I hope ago. that we don't want to go back to the days of floppy disks. Well, okay, or, that's now you're going way back. I don't know. So yeah, or it's, it's tape years. backups or whatever yeah. it is. I mean, there's a lot of advantages to the new systems that yeah. we have. And more and more things are moving to what's you know what I would call native cloud, and that's where the the provider of the software, the software uh, vendor, is is creating a the service for you to tap into. Microsoft is a clear example of this. They have been spending so much energy and resources on things like Microsoft Teams um, and other Office 365 functionality. And it's, it's phenomenal. And, and every, every year they, they continue to, to move it forward. But it's, you know, there's so many different uh, solutions out there. And it's, uh, on the one hand, it's, it's more complicated because there's more options, but Taking advantage of those options can really be uh, super helpful for your business to to make yourself more uh, efficient, provide better service for your customers, make you more attractive as an employer, which is important, very important in this, in this day and age of you know making sure you're you're be able to attract and, and retain the the right people 
Um, it's yeah. So it's just making that effort and having that process where you're continually chipping away at it. Very good points. Any last thoughts on on this? I mean, hopefully you're thinking about your planning. If you need any help or tips, we'd be happy to consult with you. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's you know one of the things. Okay, to bring it home. Um, where working with your IT provider can definitely help in this. Uh, a lot of good IT providers, I would, um, you know, we do this, um, but, but I'm sure we're not alone in that where a uh, good IT provider will meet with you on that regular basis to, to talk about where your business is today, to talk about where the technology is, to talk about how you're moving forward, and to, and to actually ensure that you're acting, uh, you know, to... to, to keep you moving forward and not just uh, not just coasting um, because if you're just coasting you know and, and just going by inertia it's it's not necessarily going to get you where you where you, where you need to be so yes. um yep so make sure you stay engaged with your it provider make sure you stay engaged make sure you have the the right people within the company that that are that are involved in those discussions make sure it's on the calendar you know look forward to those meetings and and make sure the end, that the last thing you sh- in the end of each meeting should be to schedule the next one. That's a great idea. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.